Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Talk with the Titans, live from London, UK, all the way to the US of A and worldwide. I'm your host, Callum L, and this is Talk with the Titans. On tonight's show, uh, well, actually, tonight's show is actually entitled um, Brother Polite versus uh, Rabbi Rosenberg. Now, this is actually a debate that's going to be taking place in March, um, but we're going to go through a discussion. We're going to have a panel of uh, formidable uh, individuals with inside of the com uh, com uh, inside of the conscious community really going in. So you know we've got Tima Cyrus in the building. Uh, we've got the mighty Hebrew in the building. You know we've got so many people that's going to be passing through and coming into the studios. Um, you know we've reached out to a lot of people. We've reached out to Rosenberg. We've reached out to Zion. You know everybody should be passing through the studios tonight. So. Without further ado, I'm actually going to introduce, um, you know, Tima Cyrus, um, who's on the horizon. Tima Cyrus, are you lot in the building? Yo, we here. Peace. All right. Timo Cyrus in the horizon. Could you hear me? Right. Cyrus is on the horizon. You know what? This is going to be powerful. So, you know what? The first thing that I want to talk about, actually, is um, the brother, Rabbi Harry Rosenberg. I believe he is an Ashkenazi Jew, and those for those of you who've actually been tuning in uh, to Titans TV and checked out our Speakers Corner uh, debates, we actually have an Ashkenazi Jew um, trying to explicate that they are the original Jews and they do have uh, Jewish DNA with inside of them. So, I don't know. Um, I know my brother Ngozi is actually you know, the mad scientist, the biologist, and he knows about the DNA. So, I want to know, are the Ashkenazi Jews really Jews? That's the first thing I want to know. Um, to be honest with you, there is no such thing as a, a Jewish race. Jewish is, Judaism is a religion. People in Palestine, or we know it's Palestine today, or the Arabian Peninsula, have more um, genetic variants that's indigenous to those areas more than Ashkenazis. Ashkenazis come from certain zones near Khazar, which is near Turkey. But what they did was amalgamated with um, amalgamated with women, predominantly of European lineage, uh, mitochondrial DNA speaking, or measuring the autosomal DNA. They're predominantly European. Um, the Y chromosome of a few um, is indigenous to the Near East, but even the paternal lineage that is indigenous to the Near East has its have its have has, has its origin to the Middle East or that Arabian Peninsula. Um, when we follow the phylogenetic tree um, and look at the oldest haplogroup of J, which is JP209, it arose around 40,000 years ago in the Arabian Peninsula. Then you start to have subclade branches of these Js, which forms into the haplotypes, which is J1 and J2. Now, when we look at this paternal lineage that a lot of these people are claiming, which is um, Jewish, you have just as many people in the Arabian Peninsula with the marker that's not Jewish. So there is no such thing as Arabian race. The so-called Kohen marker or the Aaron marker, we know Aaron never exists historically. He's not biblical. This J1C3, which is a subclade branch of J1, is all through the Arabian Peninsula. You have people that's Arabs with that marker. Uh, I'll be talking about the, uh, his false claims with the Limba tribe in Africa and the Ashkenazis and the Sephardics. The only real people, now the thing is, is that there were, the religion of Judaism is a cousin to Zoroastrianism. And the thing is, is if we study the time period of Isra, which was a Jew that wrote the Talmud in Persia, we have to understand that who were the people that created the stories. Even in the allegorical story in the biblical text, it says that, uh, I think it's in one chapter in Ezekiel, it says that thy mother is a Hittite and thy father is an Amorite. Amorite is nothing but an early way, an early way of describing the Western people that lived in the Arabian Peninsula or in the Levant. Basically, they were just early Arabs. The name just changed. The term Arab means to wonder, but they're the same type of people with the same type of genetic affinities. So when we talk about um, the, 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 these people that left from the Near East and went towards you know, Germany or went towards um, certain parts of Eastern Europe and went through Germany, uh, the men bred with the overall general population or the women and gave them um, some Semitic traits. So this is why when Michael Hammer tested um, a Jewish rabbi priest, he had this so-called mythical Kohen marker. But the Jewish rabbi priest that he tested was only holding on to the remnants of a few Semitic lineages that was able to be retained in that part of the world. You get what I'm saying? 
So basically, these are just Semitic people that created the religion, or people that's indigenous to the Raymond Peninsula, or near the Near East, nor, or near Central Asia, that created this religion. And this so-called Jewish uh, lineage is nothing but the remnants of, of something that's being held on by a select few of Ashkenazis that still carry a paternal Semitic trait. But due to them being up there so long, autosomally speaking, first of all, the population of them that carried the trait was only about 300. So when you measure the autosomal DNA, these people are completely Caucasian. The actual real closest so-called people that can that retain, which is nothing again, those original traits, but the original inhabitants or the relics of the people that carried the Jewish religion um, that's from the Middle East is the Mazari of Iran and Iraq, um, the Sephardic Jews, the Berber Mo Northern Moroccan Jews, or the Yemenis Jews. Now, take away the title, these people are nothing but so-called Arab type people. They're Middle Eastern type people. They're the same type of people, but these are just a select few people of the early Jewish remnants of a Semitic population that still carry the traits of, um, or the genetic traits of the whole, of, of the leftover remainder of the Jewish family so-called. So Judaism is not a, a, a race. It's a religion created by people of the Near East and Middle East. And do Ashkenazi people, are they, um, um, are they of Semitic um, origin or do they have Middle Eastern DNA? The paternal lineage of them have some Semitic traits, but their overall DNA composition is indigenous to Europe. So overall they were converts and the women were converts. They were married into the families. And if you test a Sephardic or if you test a Yemenese Jew, you can see who's more indigenous to the Near East over who's not more indigenous to the Near East. Their women were more indigenous to Europe than, uh, than, than, than the Middle East. Also, when you deal with the mythology of biblical texts, according to Ashkenazis, you cannot be Jew if it's not Jewish. Right? So if the mother's not Jewish and these people that's up there are not the the, 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 the mighty conjure DNA or the maternal lineage is not indigenous to the Middle East. How the hell are they Jewish? And their mighty conjure DNA over all over that part of the world is not indigenous to the Middle East. So they definitely not Jew if they're gonna go off the maternal lineage based off what Ashkenazis claim. So so no, they're not Jewish if they're basing it off the maternal lineage. Do they have lineage that comes out of the Middle East on a paternal side? A few of them do. But overall their mighty conjure DNA and due to them being up there for so long, they are not Jewish. That's like me saying Brother, um, 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 brother Colum, Albert Einstein was Ethiopian because he had Y chromosome E one B one B. Is he Ethiopian overall, or is Hitler Ethiopian? Both of their paternal lineages was indigenous to, to East Africa and North Africa. When you look at them, are they Ethiopian? No, they're not. They didn't classify themselves as that. So we're going to base it off the DNA composition and the overall autosomal DNA. And these people are European. And then I got um a few articles that Kufu can read right now to show and prove my pr premise. From Dr. Aaron um, Alak, uh, uh, El Elhak, I'm sorry, Dr. Aaron Elhak. And he explains the DNA composition of these people of the so called Middle East. Kufu, are you there? I mean, the Ashkenazi. Kufu, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, could you, could you read, if, if, if a Brother Kalam allow you to, could you read um, this lineage or this DNA of these so called Ashkenazis just so we can show the world who these people really are to kill a whole argument? Uh, the article um, that he's talking about is stating the the missing link of Jewish European ancestry, contrasting the Rylan and Kazarian hypothesis, and it states that um, it has proved that the Ashkenazi Jews, their roots lie in the Caucasus, a region at the border of Europe and Asia that lies between the Black and Caspian Seas, not in the Middle East. They are descendants, he argues. And they're talking about uh, Mr. El Haq, if I'm pronouncing his name correct. He said their descendants uh, of, are of the Khazars, a Turkic people who live in one of the largest medieval states in Eurasia and then migrated into Eastern Europe in the 12th and 13th centuries. He says Ashkenazi genes are far more heterogeneous than Oster and other proponents of the Ryland hypothesis. Um, he said that they did find an Eastern genetic marker in the DNA from Jews, but he said it, uh, it's not from Judea, but it's from Iran. Okay, brother. Now, Kufu, let me ask you another question. Could you pull up the article about the mighty conjure DNA and the women, which shows and proves overall who these people are, and if you can find a Torah scripture when it says that in order to be a Jew, about that mother side. Could you read about who these women are and, 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 and you know, what are they? 
Jeez, hold on Whoa. one second, one second, one second. You know what? Team Osiris on the horizon, you know, you lot are going in right about now. But before you lot go a little bit further, I would like for everybody who's actually viewing right now to share this video like crazy. Share this video. Let everybody know we've got Team Osiris in the building live right now going in. We've got a mighty Hebrew who's about to jump in after this. You know what? We've got Garfield, Team Osiris again. Listen, where it's about to go down. So please hit the share button. And if you haven't already, I don't know why you haven't already, but please just hit the like button. Let us know that you're loving the information. And the comment section is being flooded right now. So keep on asking your questions. Keep on making your comments. I'm loving what I'm seeing so far. So please, um, Team Osiris, keep going in. But we're going to get the Hebrews to give you their perspective in a little while. And we're going to make some phone calls. We're going to phone up the big hitters in the game to see what they have to say as well. So Team Osiris, keep it flowing. Yeah, okay, once again, but, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, this is Timo Cyrus. You are now on the horizon. Check us out, www.timocyrus.com, facebook.com forward slash Timo Cyrus. Um, I want to get it clear that the Hebrews do not claim the same lineage as the Ashkenazi Jews. And um, I did go through the literature, and I did it did state that for the most part that it went through the house of the Mel in the literature. So these modern... Uh, Ashkenazi or Khazarian Jews, they are using, I don't actually know where that actually originated, that it is through the mother. Um, but I'm going to get to the article and um, we can expound on that afterwards. Um, but this is from uh, Nature uh, Communications article and it states that um, the team did a uh, maternal lineage. The maternal lineages do not originate in near or Middle East or the Khazarian Caucasus, but rather, for the most part, within Mediterranean Europe. They say another twist in the findings is that the Jewish women may have been assimilated in Europe as far back as 2,000 years ago, earlier than most other studies have projected. The researchers believe the DNA could trace back to the early Roman Empire when as much as 10% of the population practiced Judaism, many of them converts. Overall, they claim at least 80% of Ashkenazi maternal maternal ancestry comes from women indigenous to Europe while 8% originated in the Near East with the rest uncertain. So with that being stated, that goes to show you that these people overall are not indigenous to the so-called Middle East, a measly 8%. And we you know if you follow the Middle East, um, the I uh, had Y chromosome E1B1B. This is why Hitler had Y chromosome E1B1B. And then when you look at the Near Eastern genetic affinities, we have to go back 20,000 years. And, um, I'm sorry. Hello? Yo, you're still there. You're still there. Okay. And even when you study the Near Eastern people that took certain took farming into Europe around 8,000 years ago, these people came from the Near East. Some people coming from the zones of Turkey. Some people coming from the zones of the Levant. So they carried earlier genetic affinities in the Middle East. So to, to answer the question, these people are not predominantly of Near Eastern, or I'm sorry, of Middle Eastern lineage. And the paternal lineages stand out as coming from the Near East or near the Caucasus and certain areas or Eurasia. But overall, there is no such thing as a Jewish race because the, the genetic market that Jews are using is the same genetic marker that you find all through Arabia, all through Palestine, all through Oman, all through Yemen, you know what I'm saying, all through that western Asia zone. You know I mean? So there is no lineage for it. There is no uh, a race for it. Even when they, when he tried the Bahari, he said he said that, that you guys, we share traits with the Limba tribe in Africa and a few people in India. But let's be, let's be technical about the Limba tribe in Africa. And a particular clan of the Lemma tribe with the trait. First of all, only 50% of the Lemma tribe carry this Y chromosome. Not all of them. The rest of the Lemma tribe have their Bantu speaking people and they speak, they have paternal lineage E1B1A. Like most people in Southwest and Central Africa or people that we come from, whether it's Fulani, Mandinka, Yoruba, uh, Bimaliki, Akan, and other Bantu speaking populations have predominantly E1B1A. Only 50% of the Lemba, which was the Buba clan, had this J1C3 marker. The rest was indigenous. Now this is how these people trick you to have you thinking that you're a Hebrew. When they said Limba clan, or when they said Limba, you think that because you've seen E1B1A, 
amongst the limba, they wasn't talking about that branch of a Kohen marker. That's not the Kohen marker. They were talking about J1C3. And this, is go this goes out to the Hebrews that's out there trying to trick people, trying to say that E1B1A is a Semitic marker. It is not. That paternal lineage arose around 30,000 years ago in the highlands of Ethiopia, and the shit didn't leave out. And if it did leave out, it left out amongst the Natufians around 15,000 years ago with their brothers E3B that took farming into the Near East. But overall, it's indigenous to Africa. The, the, the Kohen marker that they talk about, because you've got to be careful when you hear these people, is talking about the other 50% of the Buba clan of the Limba, which carries the J1C3 marker, the same J1C3 that people in Yemen have. And so what happened was is that a few people from the Middle East came into that part of Africa, took on women, and bred with the women. And, by the time, and this was around 2,000 years ago. So by the time you look at them now, the people look black the 50 percent of them, but overall due to them breeding with black women amongst these Bantu speakers for generation after generation, their autosomal DNA is still predominantly sub-Saharan African. The Y chromosome didn't change amongst 50 percent of them. Then you have to understand there's two clans of two types of limba. You have the rimba near Zimbabwe and you have the limba. Now when, you, when they measured the rimba of Zimbabwe, they also found a near eastern Y chromosome which is T1B. So what they're finding out now is that hey, these people don't carry a Jewish marker. They carry this trade amongst a trade route going between the Bantu-speaking population and the Middle Eastern population, meaning that a few of these men were trading amongst one, these men. Some people settled in that part of Africa, get, start reproducing with our women, and 50% of these men still carry the traits of their paternal lineages of these people from the Middle East that came through Yemen. Some of them carrying a Near Eastern mark in T1B against the Rimba population. So overall, do not get the Kohen marker, J1C3, mixed up with E1B1A. E1B1A was lingering around Africa before the J1C3 came. So let's get that shit correct. And that's all I want to say on that. Damn. Let me tell you now, <laughs> Ngozi is shutting it down. Shutting it down. You know what? I don't know. I don't know if he has shut it down to me. It sounds like he shut it down, but I know my Hebrew brothers have definitely got something to say. But I'm going to backtrack a little bit. I'm going to backtrack a little bit for those people who don't know what's going on right about now. And I've, I've never been familiar with the show. So basically, Talk with the Titans was birthed out of the idea that the intellectual giants of our communities should have a well organized platform to present discuss and debate critical information affecting our community and right about now you know what the highlight is the brother polite versus rabbi harry rosenberg you know what and zion lex has actually got a debate with sarah suit and seti so i'm trying to get my brother um zion lex on to the platform right about now um so i can hear what he has to say but basim if you're there, can you please just give us a backtrack and give us um, an overview of what's been transpiring with inside of the community? Hey, Caleb, are, are you sure your show is live? Um, yes, it's live. I think the, the problem is we've got a Team Osiris um, blog, uh, blog talk, so you can go on to Team Osiris uh, on the blog talk. Um, but that show there, I don't believe, is being live streamed, but this one is being live streamed. Correct. Okay. All right. No problem. So yeah, Brother Basim, um, if it's possible, please just give us an overview. Sure thing, Colin. First of all, let me say peace to you. I appreciate the invite and let me speak on your platform. So we all know that March 20th, there's a debate scheduled. Uh, there's been a few interviews that took place. Uh, a lot of people know Zion Lex and Rabbi Rosenberg were on uh, UGR, Underground Radio, and there were some questions that uh, were asked to those gentlemen. I personally feel like some of the questions and topics were deflected, but I also understand that this gentleman, you know, they've got a debate coming up, so obviously there's some information that they're probably holding till then, and I completely understand that. Uh, there was also a couple live streams that took place on Sonetta TV where Polite and the rabbi actually sat down and they discussed some things uh, pertaining to the debate. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Colin, you know that amongst the Hebrews and the Israelites, whether they're uh, Messianic or non-Messianic, Torah-based, however you describe it, some subscribe to the New Testament and the Messiah, some don't. But there's, a, there's an agenda here that I, that I think is slowly starting to play out. Uh, there's a lot of topics that are being discussed and handled in-house, and then there's also some that are playing out in the public eye. 
So anytime you, you know you go with religion, race, color, creed, ethnicity, nationality, and then you throw in the science with genetics and DNA, uh, you know the controversy can can definitely get stirred up. So I just hope that it, it's not a recipe for a disaster. And with my closing statement, I, I definitely want to encourage anybody. You you know the New York Times is going to be there. Obviously, we know who controls the New York Times and, and controls most of the media. Please do not give them anything to run with. I encourage everybody to be on their best behavior uh, so that there's no fuel to add to the fire because uh, I personally feel that the New York Times is going to publish whatever they want r regardless of the outcome of the debate and you know who the audience thinks went, uh, you know, won that debate. Uh, if anybody's familiar with some of the backlash when you get the JDL and the Anti-Defamation League and the Jewish Defense League, they're known for going after people for damages to get you to retract your statement if you published it in a magazine, a newspaper, or if you said something on TV or a radio show. Uh, they will seek damages. Me, personally, I only fear the Most High. I don't fear any other men. But they've got an unlimited budget if they do choose to hone in on you and seek damages and label you anti-Semitic or come after you for pushing or promoting anti-Semitism, it can be a long, drawn-out battle. Thank so you, Brother that, Colin, Thank you uh, thank for the invite, and I'm looking forward to hearing more from uh, Ngozi, the Mighty Hebrew, and the, uh, more Ray Yoel. Take care. Definitely, definitely. Shalom, shalom. You know what? Oh my gosh, this is going to be so powerful. Um, you know, our brothers, you know, let the hat out of the bag, uh, or should I say, they let the rabbit out of the bag, that we have got, we're hearing right now, first for the, for the very first time, that the New York Times is actually going to be there. So you know what? I have to give my kudos and thanks and praise um, to the brothers, such as Son, uh, um, who's actually you know, been very instrumental in making certain things like these great events and debates actually take place within inside of the conscious community. And you know what? It's actually spreading out vast. It's spreading out so wide and far. We've got people flying out all the way from Israel, all the way from Israel to New York to come in and have dialogue um, with the conscious community. So it seems as our reach as a people are, is, is global, is worldwide. I, for one, knowing it from the fact that we look at the analytics, we see people in Australia, Japan, uh, Tokyo, uh, Netherlands, uh, Trinidad, Grenada, you know, the Americas, Africa, N Nigeria, Zimbabwe, all of these different types of people are tuning in to watch these shows. So, you know, what? this is a beautiful thing that I have to give my, you know, praise to Brother uh, Polite and also to the Brother Sarnetta for making these great moves actually take place. Um, you know, I'm actually going to invite now, I need to hear some Hebrew speaking. I need to hear, you know what, I've been seeing this brother for a while now. Um, the brother goes by the name of the Mighty Hebrew. Uh, Mighty Hebrew, let me know if you're there. Um, this is a powerful brother. I know most of you have seen him on Sun at TV, um, seen him going up against the great debating certain people like Sarasu and Seti. So you know what, let me see, is our brother there? Hello, yo. I'm here, this is the Mighty Hebrew. First and foremost, giving all praise and honor to Yahwa, the eternal supreme power for one of the multiverse in this universe. My name is Tribal Minister Charlene Dean. Ben Ami Matuzari, I'm Ben Yasha Allah. I'm known as the Mighty Hebrew. I'm the head tribal minister of the kingdom of Yahoo's, coming to the house of Yahuda. I'm the spearhead along with More Yoel Ben Yisra of the Mighty Hebrews. Um, we just here to bring forth the proper information of the true original Hebrew Israelite sovereign nation because there's been a lot of misconception and deception that's been coming amongst many sides dealing with the Hebrew Israelite culture. And I want to address it, and I'm going to address it the best way I know how, and that's to deal with the truth. Hallelujah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You know what? So let's let's get this started. Let's actually get this started. I want to have this discussion right. going. Are you there? I'm absolutely here. Great. So you know what? You've been watching um, what's been transpiring um, with Polite and this brother called um, Rabbi Harry Rosenberg. Now, there was a live stream last night. Um, what is your take upon the live stream based upon, you know what, the brother's answers to Polite's questions? Was Polite trying to lead him down a particular path? What do you, what's, what's your whole outlook on yesterday's uh, in particular 
uh, dialogue between the two brothers? Okay, that's a good question. Um, I want to I want to um go a little bit backwards, a little bit okay. before I move forward to that subject matter at hand, because there was a comment made by Timo Cyrus, and first of all, I give props to where props is due. I respect the scholarship that's coming through Timo Cyrus, but I want to show the family something. That whole thing that we're dealing with the the J1 Heitler group, that's a forgery. There is no such thing as a Semitic J1 Heitler group. That was all made up. There's information given out there today showing that genetics has already shown and proved and has confirmed emphatically that the Hebrews are an original Afroquois or Asiatic people. And we know for a fact that the original indigenous aboriginal origins of the Hebrews were noted by all the classical authors. We're talking about Sir Godfrey Higgins. We're talking about James Bressett. We're talking about Gerald Massey. Countless, you know, um, scholars that have said that the Hebrews were Afroquois people. Okay? And now, I want to I deal with this so-called Kohen gene, or more properly, the Kohen model, hyplotype, or the CMH. Now, for my research, again, those that control the world and the world powers is the same ones that claim that they have discovered this so-called hypno group. This was discovered, they say, in 1980, excuse me, 1997 CE by Jewish scientists. Now, this patrilineal genetic marker that is found on the Y chromosome was thought and claimed to have had high frequency amongst the Jewish and so-called Ashkenazi and Sephardic so-called priesthood. I'm going to keep saying so-called because they're not the true priesthood of the Levit the Levit excuse me, the Levitical priesthood. And it was thought that it was a signature of ancient Hebrew ancestry. Now, through research, we know that the hyplotype or the CMH is indeed a part of what they claim a hyplogroup or HGJ that originated in Black Arabia or Afro Arabia. This is what they say. And they claim that this shows and proves Semitism. Now, while early reports, largely most of this came from Ashkenazi white Jewish writers, they were the ones that tended to portray this discovery as evidence. They're the ones that pushed it out in the world that they were showing true Hebrew lineage with a genetic claim to the set apart land, which is only a portion of northeastern Africa, which is now known to the world as Yisrael. But we know through research that further genetic test reports demonstrates and shows the opposite. Now, there are two data sets in particular that turned this bullshit over its head. Now, they say that the purists, okay, surviving remnants of the children of Yisrael or Yasha Allah that they claim is identified by the CMS, um, CMH test is of the tribe of the Israelites from India, the Beni Yisrael, the Israelites or the Kokan, and also to what they call the so-called Falashians and the so-called black Jews of South Africa known as the Lumber. We got to understand what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a being that controls the existence of man on this plane. They control the banking system. They control politics. They control education. They control the, the, the populations of the earth. Every move that we make, even when it comes to, you know, certain things that the black conscious community, even Israelites included, have adopted, was created by those that are in opposition to the position. These people are known from the beginning to be wicked, diabolical, twisted liars, and the nerve of us to try to take their scholarship, because remember, they're trying to imprint themselves as being the masters of the universe. So what, is they, what are they doing? They created a fictional J chromosome on the Y chromosome and try to say this is Semitic. This is what they imprinted. They haven't proved to the world that they J hyper group is Semitic. That is something that they label. Now, to go into the facts, you can actually go to the American Journal on Human Genetics, page 74, 2004. Uh, 1,023 and 1,034. You can also go to the Journal on Endogenetic Studies, 
page six, 2003. Now, in their whole premise, anybody that studies Judaism, it is told to be a Jew as through halakha, or if you go through a state of conversion, or your mother has to be born Jewish. Now, earlier it was asked, I, I don't know, I may, it may have been from Timo Cyrus, where it says to show where it says in the Torah that it's through the mother that determines that you're Jewish. Well, here's a, um, a awakening for all of us. The Torah doesn't teach what defines an Israelite through the mother. It determines through the father. Now, when you read in Bemid's bar, falsely called Gen uh, uh, um, Numbers, chapter 1, verse 18, it reads on this wise, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their fathers by the house of their fathers. Then when you go into the book of Ezra, when you go into the book of Ezra, chapter 2, verses, um, I start at verse... Um, Let's start at verse 61 and 62. It says, In the children of the priests, the children of Habisha, the children of Kos, and the children of Beosara, which took the wife of the daughters of Beosara, the Gideonite, and was called after their names. These sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy, but they were not found. Therefore, they, as polluted, put from the priesthood, meaning that because they couldn't prove their pedigree through their father, they wasn't a part of the priesthood. So in Israelite culture, our way of life, we trace our lineage patrilineally. Are we patriotic? No. But we trace our lineage patrilineally. And these so-called Jews trace their lineage, as they say, matrilineally. So when we look at that, if they're saying that, then they're not the children of Israel. See, what we need to be asking is not about, you know, the so-called Hebrew God. Just as I said yesterday, let's deal with the court of law, for example, to show if the Jews are really who they say they are. Okay, the mm. court of law, before you can even deal with what is known as a case, you must deal with two things. That is proper status and subject matter jurisdiction. <laughs> so everybody on this panel right here, Mute your phones because I want everybody to hear this. So please mute it, okay? So what I'm saying is this. Subject matter jurisdiction and proper status. Now, we hear that there's no evidence whatsoever, okay, that the so-called Jews have any direct descent lineage into the continent of Africa and see tons of tribes that trace their lineage through... Not all the tribes in Africa, but there are tribes in Africa that clearly say that they are direct lineage of ancient Israel. This is what they're trying to conceal. And another thing, when I heard about um, somebody saying that the brother, the rabbi believes that nine of the tribes are truly African and then the other three are not, what people fail to understand because they do not understand Judaism. They look at Judaism as just a plain religion, true to a degree, but it's also a cultural distortion of Israelite thought. And Judaism wasn't built like, when you look at religions like Islam and Christianity, it was like a set place in the development where it was created. Whereas though with Judaism, it was different stages and growth and development with these people. So when they talk about these nine tribes, what they're trying to say is when, uh, uh, um, Joseph went into the land of Kemet or Egypt. He had married the Egyptian priest, the Egyptian priest's daughter, and had Ephraim and Manasseh. And through that, then that Egyptian woman is the one that gave birth because they acknowledge the matrilineal lineage, these black tribes coming through Ephraim and Manasseh. And then the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom split in 722 BCE. So now they're saying that the northern kingdom is African, and then the southern kingdom, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, which is the, the, the ecclesiastical jurisdiction and the national jurisdiction, these are Europeans. This is what they're trying to say. And when you read the Talmud, they say that the northern kingdom of Israel is no more remembrance that they will not have a part of this kingdom. So... 
there's a hidden agenda behind what they're talking about. When you start talking about Judaism, the European Talmudic code, you are not talking about the Hebrew culture. And too long merged the Jewish religion with Hebrew Israelite culture and thought. As a matter of fact, if anybody know the Ivrit language, because I'm one that knows Hebrew, my spiritual advisor is a Hebrew expert. I made sure I brought him on the phone. There's no such thing as the word Jew in the Hebrew language. The people of ancient Yasha Allah or Yisrael never knew nothing about a Jew. So to label the children of Yisrael or the 12 tribes of Yisrael as Jews is a misnomer because we know in the ancient Hebrew language there's no J nor no E in the Hebrew language. And what they did was they took the word Yahuwata or Yahuda or Judah and start labeling all the 12 tribes of Israel Jews. So in no way, shape, form, or fashion does the Hebrew Israelites stand with any Talmudic Jewish man. Okay? That has to be understood and made clear. There is a clear distinction between Hebrew Israelite concrete thought versus Jewish abstract thought the same way as, you know, dealing with Egyptology, true Egyptologists are those that are dealing with an Afrocentric thought. They had to unravel and put back in proper position the true African heritage of ancient Kemet is the same thing that the Hebrew Israelites must do. We must recapture the land of Yisrael because that is a part of Africa. That is northeastern Africa. The Israelites were Afrikoid people. They were original people. They have stolen. They have lied. They have manipulated. And they have connived and deceived the world into believing that that piece of real estate is theirs. They're cultural bandits. They only got that land back in 1940. 48, read the Belfort Declaration. They are not the people of the book. They have never been the people of the book. If they were so much the people of the book, why they don't act like the people of the book? Why they don't have the characteristics of the people of the book? We must examine before we say these are the so-called Jews. This is what's giving them power. This is what's giving them the power to define because they have manipulated the world to believe that they are the so-called Jews. Just like them fake Egyptians over there in Egypt have uh, manipulated the world to have people believe that they are the builders of the pyramids, that they are the relatives of Khufu, that they are the a hot suit suit and all them different leaders that came in the past from out of Kemet, the so-called Egyptians over there, which is nothing but Animic Turks and other different people that have amalgamated with the indigenous population over there. And they making it seem like that they're the original people when they not. So what I'm saying is just as hard as we're trying to recapture Egypt, we want to be hard pressed and recapture the ancient land of Israel. And let's go deep. Let's show you something. Let's 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 get deep now in the Torah. It hold clearly on, on, tells. Hold on, my brother. Hold on, hold on one second. Yes, you know what? If I could drop some bombs right now, I should be. I would be dropping bombs. Damn, you're going in. Can I respond? Can I respond, brother Kalam? Or not hold yet. On, hold on, hold on. I not yet. Not not just yet. Not just yet. You know what? Because there's there's so many people that's trying to get in right now. You know, I they need to actually have their voices. Yeah, yeah. So just oh, give me a second. Give me a second. Just keep your um mics oh. muted, okay? You know, no, they let me, just give a, let me give a big shout out right now to my brother Virtue TV. If you haven't checked out Virtue TV, he's doing a social experiment where he's asking people questions to do with the Bible. This is real fitting right now. So if you're actually tuned in right now, please open up a separate uh, a new tab and type in YouTube Virtue TV and check out his channel, please. It's another brother from the UK that's putting in the work. You know what? Also, please check out um, Black Eyes TV, check out Black Eyes TV. Um, you know he's done some such great works as well with people um, who's actually in Enki, Minister Enki's camp. So check him out as well. Also, please check out Got Kush TV. So let me just do my shout outs real quick. But you know what? I know we've got some so many people trying to get in right now and have their voices heard. I'm gonna allow you to go continue in a little while, my brother. Um, my Hebrew, but I want to hear from Garfield. This is another Team of Cyrus member. I want to hear from him because I know he is a biblical scholar. He's a biblical expert. Um, so please, let me hear from you, Garfield, what you have to say, and then afterwards, I want to touch back upon 
um, the debate that's taking place. I want to touch back on, on the questions that's laid out about the Hebrew God, about whether the black man is cursed according to the to the Torah. And I want to go into this. So, um, Brother right, Garfield, I'm go here. Ahead. Peace, Brother Garfield here, Team Osiris. I, I want to say, um, and Gozi, unmute your mic real quick because I'm going to ask you a question real quick. Because I, I, I'm going to tie this in together, Kalal. Um, brother Ngozi, yes, uh, sir. the brother just made a claim, right? And and I'm very dis I'm very perturbed right now because mm -hmm. this sham that has been put on our community and these brothers putting it out in public is uh -huh. a big sham behind the shams. The mm -hmm. Jews are trying to be somebody that's written in a book, but mm -hmm. we are now trying to adapt what they are mainly a part of are trying to portray, which is fake. But the story behind that story is also fake. So how right. is it that we're condemning them when you guys are spreading lies too? So now let me ask you something about this Jay Marker the brother just brought up. Because in all fairness, the brother made a claim and talk about, oh, it's because it's white, people putting it out, so we shouldn't put out <laughs> anything. Now, now, right. now brother Ngozi, if, you, if your wife get pregnant and the baby don't look like you, and you decide to do a test, what is that test called? A DNA test, right? A DNA test, That's correct. So you're going to trust yeah. that DNA test if it says that you're the father, right? That's right. Now, is that science or is it white science? That's science. It don't belong to nobody. It's just science. That's just right. what it is. Now, now, respond to that J. Marker thing, and I'm not going to get into something real deep real quick. Well, he, well, are you, well, asking, well, he, are you asking on, me he, to he, respond? He, 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 no, he asking me, brother. Just tell him on side. Because I, he, I, it seemed like he took me out of context. Uh, no, 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 he took you out of context. Let me just say this. Okay. First, of, okay. first, first of all, everything that he said was completely off when it comes to the J marker. No one said nothing about a uh, Semitic. Uh, Sem first of all, Semitic is a language. Arabic is a Semit part of the Semitic family. Amharic is a part of the Semitic family. Aramaic is part of the Semitic family. Um, the Aksumite um, languages in northern Ethiopia. Tigray is part of the Semitic language family. Sabian is South Semitic. The Mahari languages are Southern Semitic. And that Semitic family is part of the Afro-Asiatic family. And what we have to understand is this, is that majority of the people that speak Semitic languages, those different Semitic languages, are predominantly J markers. They are not E1B1A. That's bullshit. It is not E1B1B. Now, you're correct. When J arose around 40,000 years ago, JP209, those people were dark-skinned. And the original people beginning, called the Mahiri population are of darker hue, and they have the earliest subclad branches of J1. You're correct, but they are not sub-Saharan African. Another thing, Arabian Peninsula, or the Middle East, so-called Middle East, is not on the plate tectonic of Africa. We got to deal with plate tectonics now in geology. Y'all want to unite it and ignite it and make it that, but it's not that. And if the people of Israel or ancient Palestine was uh, a darker hue, just because someone is dark-skinned does not make them the people that you descend from. You descend from people in southwest and central Africa, predominantly um, uh, niger Kadofian speakers, whether it's Yoruba, Mandinka, uh, Fula, or Kwa, or Dibbis. And a few of your ancestors came from the Bantu, Bantu speaking people. niger Kadofian language family is not the same thing as Afro-Asiatic. Let's get that correct. Those are different language families. If you deal with the, when you deal with the syntax and content, it's different language families. You don't come from them people. So even if the original people of the Middle East were dark skinned, all I'm saying is, is that if anybody is connected to a so-called people that created this Jewish faith or a so-called the Zoroastrian, it's the people of modern day Palestine today. Those people have been lingering around there for a long time. We got to get out of the color, the color thing because a person has olive skin or lighter skin that makes them not original over original. And that's why a lot of those Arabs don't respect those fake Ashkenazi Jews as we brought up earlier because overall their DNA composition is of people of Europe. And I brought that up. And overall, a lot of people that speak that practice Islam in the Middle East don't respect them because they know damn well that they don't come from over there. They're not from over there. Those Arabs that's over there have just as much genetic, genetic affinities that's indigenous to those areas than those other people that came in in 1940. So let's Let's get that shit correct. J marker does develop in the Arabian Peninsula, and most people that speak Semitic languages have J markers. Even those Ethiopians that you brought up, we have to understand what the Aksumite Empire was. When Sabians went back into Africa, met up with Kushites due to trade and formed the Afro, I mean, um, the Semitic languages like um, Amhad, um, Amhadic or, or, or the Tigray languages that they speak in Eritrea or Habasha. Habash does a, that's a Semitic language because Semitic men came into Ethiopia because they had a trade route amongst the Kushites. King Azana was fighting for the Byzantine Empire and his punk ass 
ass helped destroy Monroe. So the, those Ethiopians that people are naming are nothing but a bunch of fucking house niggas. Study oh, the lineage of them and see who the fuck they are. No That's all I got. I'm, I'm oh, sorry for who you talking I'm to like that? I'm sorry for who, what you talking talk, to? Talk, I'm talking to you, buddy. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm here. I'm talking to you. So what I'm trying to say is this: the whole people that started that. You, you try to make you, you got to learn how to pronounce haplo group. It's not hyplo group. It's haplo group. So I have to I have to deal with somebody that knows what what they're saying and take words serious before they try to talk about what genes is and what DNA is. You, right, you, you, you learn to pronounce it. Are you it, finished? Are you finished? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on finish. One second. One second. Are you finished? Because I want to respond. I want to respond to what he said. Before my brother responds, actually go and respond. Because he, he's have, being he's being disrespectful. I didn't come on the show and be disrespectful towards nobody. You understand what I'm saying? So, I, I mean, if I we're going to deal with each other as gentlemen, let's deal with each other as gentlemen. That's one thing. You understand what I'm saying? But um, when the brother get finished speaking, then I'm going to speak. And I'm going to show you how a gentleman is to operate. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this. Uh, no, let, let me, I let thought me, the brother Kyle was going to say something on, first. On, then I was going to respond. Let, let, it, let him, um, our might Hebrew, respond. Okay, everybody keep your mics muted. Let my, my brother Mike he will respond. And then Garfield, I know it's going to be your turn, but let, let my brother just respond real quickly because we're in the heat right now. So okay. uh, Mike Hebrew, quickly respond and let Garfield um, jump on next. Absolutely. First and foremost, giving all praise to eternal power, Yahweh, the supreme intelligence of the multiverse and this universe. First of all, what we're talking about here is the discussion of what's been going on with this debate. And see, what's happening right now is that you're taking it somewhere where it's though that, that needs to be on another platform. If you want to have an open discussion with me on the level on that consciousness, dealing with who I say I am and who you say you are, then we can do that. But let's stay focused on the topic. What I'm saying to you is when the brother used DNA talking about paternal lineage and dealing with when one determines the the you know the parental uh, 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 connection with a child via the father that is not the same when you're talking about you know haplo or hyplo type groups however you want to talk about it tomato tomato whatever the point that I'm stressing is these are the same people we got to understand who we dealing with on a whole nother level. We are dealing with the same exact people that want our total destruction. You know, there's a different type of science that I'm talking about versus what y'all dealing with. There's something that, I talk, that I'm dealing with called observation and observing. Now, you can say, okay, this is not this, this is not that. But when you go to the continent, they're talking something different. Now, when you talk about indigenous populations, okay, when you start talking about the so-called Middle East, and you're saying that that's not a part of the continent of Africa and all this, that, the third, that can be argued all day because just as you have your scholars that say that it's not a part of Africa, there's scholars that say the total opposite. And this argument can be argued all day. But the point taken is this. What I'm saying is to get a true actual debate, a live debate in truth, it will only be right for a Hebrew Israelite to debate a so-called Jew. Just as it would be right for a one a person that deals with the Kemetic school of thought to debate a Eurocentric Egyptologist. And this is how we come to see what is truth and what is not. You understand what I'm saying? Because people have a perceived a uh, 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 some type Preach, of perceived brother. notion of how they're determining the scripture is. If you're coming from an abstract thought process of the scripture, you will never deal with it in full truth because you already have an arterial motive about the scripture. That's just like if I'm anti kemetic or, or anti so called Egyptian. When I read the book of coming forth from darkness into light or the so called book of the dead, or any of the comedian manuscripts, if I have a point of view that is in opposition to the position, then I'm always going to bring forth a biased opinion. And what I'm saying is tonight, real men of honor, real men of value don't operate in this mannerism. I came on this conversation in respect. And so far, 
already seen strikes from the other end. I'm saying on this phone right now that the so-called Jews that are masquerading to be the children of Israel are not the real Jews. Just like the so-called Arabs, when you start talking about the Palestinians, you got to do history, which they took that word from Philistines. Them so-called Arabs over there are not the original inhabitants of that land neither. So when we start building and getting an understanding of this, we know that there were indigenous Hebrew tribes that were pushed into West Africa. Not only are we saying that over here in the wilderness of North America, South America, Central America, and the Caribbean islands, we can go over to West Africa right now where I'm in contact with the Evos. And when I talk about, I'm talking about Evo Gad, Evo Eri, the different Evos over in Nigeria that uphold the Hebrew culture that clearly say that what people are saying in the Americas about them converting is a lie. That they were born and they will and they had understanding for thousands of years about their Hebrew culture. So to sit up here and argue about, you know, this, 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 this J Haplo or Hyplo group, this is their information. We've been known for years prior to the European bringing up anything to us that the Hebrews were so-called black. We already knew that there were tribes in Africa that were saying that they was Hebrews from the rip. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm going to say this again. If we could take Egypt, these are the same people that took Egypt and tried to make that separate from the continent of Africa. These are the same people that took Egypt or Kemet, Tamarei, Taseti, whatever name you want to call it. They tried to whitewash them people. It's the same exact thing that they did with ancient Israel. The same exact thing. And the nerve of us to sit up here and act like this is not what they did. And this is exactly what they did. They've been masquerading for years. They control the world masses by our ignorance, by us, by us not knowing. And rest in completeness, the Adonai knew, Rabbi knew, Ben Ami, Ben Yisrael. Because if it wasn't for our community, the Hebrew Israelites, that went back into the land in the 60s and settled in the land and to reestablish the quote-unquote African presence in that land, we wouldn't even have known that there was indigenous tribes inside southern Israel. We talking about Tel Aviv, Mitzrayim, Ramon, Tobias, all over there where you can go into the indigenous populations and they're saying that they're the original people and they look Afrocoid to me. If you ever been to Israel, okay, which we have been, if you ever been to Israel, then you would know for a fact that there's more indigenous people in that land. We're not just talking about the Arabs because we only look at the TV, which is controlled by those that claim that they are the Jews. Once again, we don't even know that there are populations of people over there that's been in the land for thousands of years that are labeled as quote unquote Africoid and live in the so-called Middle East. So all this about the, the tectonic plates is this Africa, it, this isn't Africa. We define that will and redefine that will. You know, and I'm going to say this last thing. Just as they cut Africa and said, this is Africa, we have a right to define at will. You understand what I'm saying? Because they've been having the power to define long enough saying this is what it is. Now we're saying this is what it is. And there's millions and millions of Israelites on the rise. And after all the philosophical debate at the end, Israel still rising. Halu why y'all. Who? So all this talk, going, all this talk going back. No, I just want to say this one thing because I don't disrespect. I don't. I don't disrespect nobody. I know Garfield. We are. He okay with my mother. And how that came off. We as men. We got it. This is the problem with the conscious community and the Hebrew Israelite community. We don't brother have some Hebrew. respect brother, brother towards Hebrew. each other. Brother Hebrew, I just want to say this. This is Kufu from Team Osiris. Let me say this one thing. Yes, when we sir. came on the show, we did not come on the show to discuss your ideology. We came on the show to discuss the Rosenberg, the Rosenberg and polite debate. Now, right. When, when, when my brother was, you know, bringing out the information, because you're here and the information that he brought out you disagree with, you put yourself in that line of fire. I ain't that, in the line we, of we fire. Didn't, we didn't, we didn't, I ain't we in the line of fire. Here. I'm in agreement with y'all. I'm in agreement with y'all that they're not the Jews. Let me, let, 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 let's, 
interrupt and let me just get one I had to say for two, three minutes, and then you can. Go go. All right, Garfield. I'm, I'm ready to go in. Garfield, let me, Garfield, let me go Garfield. next, bro. Garfield, before you go in, <laughs> before you go in, I just want to remind our panel members. I know we've got a full panel member um, right now, and there's so many people that's trying to get at me to get on. We got more Radio L on here. We got other people that came on here. We that's was doing right. something else. We asked right. to be invited here. We didn't ask to come here. That's right. That's right. So you know what? So let's yeah. make that clear. Can everyone just mute their mics? <laughs> mute their mics because if you're not speaking, please mute your mics. Talk with Italians has three rules. The first rule is is to respect somebody's cipher if they're speaking. Please do Absolutely. not talk, talk them. The second rule is is please no profanity. We've got children actually viewing these shows. Trust me, we've got children viewing these shows. We've got these shows actually playing in barber shops as well. So there's people you know are sitting around TVs watching these shows. And the third rule is is to keep your mic muted at all times. If you're not speaking, your mic should be muted. Now you know what. Um, I just want to also welcome. We've got some um, people in here that has not actually been introduced to the uh, to the listening audience right now. We've actually got uh, the Moray, our brother Moray uh, Yoel, who's actually in uh, the building. He's going to be talking very soon. We've also got, you know what, um, my brother. I swear to you, right now, I believe he was one of the first, or if not the first, Titan to actually appear on Talk With The Titans and I got so much love and I got so much adoration to this brother and that's the brother Israel Doctrine. You know what? Israel Doctrine, peace, salute to you and we're going to get you into the building and I'm going to be talking real soon. But right about now, we're going to get Garfield to go in. If you're watching right now, please, if you're watching right now, give us a big thumbs up if you're loving the information as well. Share this video, share this video and if you've got any questions, just leave it inside of the comment section on the right hand side and I will be sure to actually ask those questions to the panel members. <coughs> just, just CC my name, just press the at symbol and Titans TV so I know that you're actually um, talking to me. All right, um, Brother Garfield, please. Yeah, um, everybody please. mute their mic so there's no feedback. Thanks. Hey, yeah. thanks for allowing me the chance to be on the show. Team Osiris, Brother Garfield here. Hey, mighty Hebrew, let me just say this, brother. You know there's our respect and love, but, you know, sometimes when people respond in certain manner and talk certain things, you know, we got we to gotta fight back. We are not against the Bible. We are not against your religion. We are not against your God. We are not against the laws. We are against misinformation. That's what Team Osiris is about. So now let me let me just address something that you just said real quickly regarding the Igbo people, just to you know, just to to, to, to just put an end to this. They found they found archaeology, it's called um Igbo work was found at Ensuka, over twenty five between twenty five hundred and three thousand BC. Because what a lot of people realize is that they have two they have a hypothesis that's called the Oriental hypothesis that people made up to say that the Igbo either came from Egypt or they either came from Israel. So now, if you have a, uh, have a pottery that's dated 3000 BC, that's rooted in the Igbo people, that, dis that just destroys every single person that says that they came from Israel, lets them look kind of silly. Because how Israel didn't exist 2500 BC, so the Igbo could not come from there. And research the word, it's called Ensuka, N-S-U-K-K-A. -K -K it's a pottery that they found. It's called archaeology. Call it white science, black science, whatever. It's science. And it proves that the Igbo people already existed there, living there. Anybody that came there made the original Igbo converts. I just need to make that clear. All right? Second thing I want to say. We're talking about the debate, right, between the, the, the Rosenberg guy and whatever. A claim was made that we are the real Jews and we are the real this. I am saying this publicly so everybody could understand. I don't think anybody in America can claim anything as far as being a Hebrew um, bloodline-wise or any-wise because the story in itself is full of mythology and it's not even real. So how can you claim a history that is predicated on misinformation? For example, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar never destroyed Egypt. But in your Bible, the prophecy said that he did. And we know this is not true. We know we, in, in the Bible, it, it claims that there were slaves in Babylon. That's not true. So these are things that we need to talk about. We need to talk about the original Judah that existed before the Judah that you were talking about. So I'm not concerned about the Ashkenazi Jews or whatever. Let them debate. I, I can't say to Polite, don't debate. Why are we mad if Polite is having a debate? Why didn't you set up a debate with the white boy? 
Why didn't you set it up? So you're mad and everybody's in an uproar because this Ashkenazi Jew is going to be polite? I thought we I thought nobody likes polite. Why do we even care what polite do? All of a sudden now we're gonna jump on polite. You know, I don't really care about polite either way. But my point is nobody's in a position, anybody on this panel is on this is on is here to claim could claim that they're Hebrew, could claim that they're Israelite, could prove it either. And for those who say that they're African Israelites, yes, there are people in West Africa, I will agree, who carried on traditions. I'm not gonna lie. Yes, it's true. Some people did. But they didn't have a Bible before the slave trade. Nobody had a Bible carrying around reading different messages. That's not true. We know tradition um, was carried on because Judea, Judea was there and people claimed that after 70 AD, people was exiled and they ran off. That's a whole other joke. But, you know, we won't get all into that. But let me just make it clear to everybody on the panel. You might claim who you are. You have the right to do that. But if there's misinformation, I'm going to come and I'm going to bring information that's going to, be you know in opposite of what you're saying. So let me just further let me just finish this by saying this. The bottom line to everything, as far as what the brother just said, mighty Hebrew, you have the right to believe what you believe, and I have a right to accept what I have researched and believe. But I don't believe anybody is in any position to say, hey, you can you can debate these Jews because they're not real when the whole entire story is really mythology. Nobody's in a position to say that. Not that I'm taking it for the Jewish guy. I'm not taking it for him either. I'm just saying the debate's going to happen regardless. If the New York Times is there or whoever is there, well, hey, more power to them. I don't know what the motive is behind the debate. I might have, I might have a little assumption here and there. But, I mean, the debate's going to happen. What are we going to do? We're going to argue and say, oh, we the real Jews, so this Jewish guy can't argue on the second. I mean, that's a, I mean, come on. We're not kids here. Now, 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 in all due respect to Kalam and, and him inviting me on the show, I want to make something clear to everybody that's claiming something. We have DNA. We have science. If you don't accept it, that means, hey, don't go to the doctor. If you don't like science, don't deal with the doctor. Everybody is white science, whiteness. Don't deal with medicine. Don't deal with anything. Do your own thing and live in the bushland. All this stupidness about DNA and these people made this up is rubbish. Now, we need to deal with facts and deal with facts and deal with facts right. If you can't afford to be challenged, as I just said a while ago, you're not going to be comfortable around Team Osiris because that's all we do every day. We challenge each other and we challenge misinformation. So I'm going to say this openly right now. That's going to, whether you get mad or anybody get mad or not, the majority of the stories in the Bible are not from a historical angle. It's from a writer's angle trying to perpetrate a history to give themselves self-worth. The only reason, my brother, let me teach you something, that any person who claims Hebrew or Israel have to the land is because of a story in a book. You have no right to that land without that book. And if you don't know that by now, I don't know what to tell you. Because the Amorites run that land, the Canaanites had the land, the Persians had the land, the Egyptians had the land, the, um, the, the, the Greeks had the land, and every major empire had the land, and the Jews, yes, the Judeans, while they were writing their history, they said, okay, God gave us this land. He blessed us through Abraham. That's the only premise you guys have to that land is a story. Nothing else. Because you, there was no Israelite empire until the second century BC, and that is true history. No time while the Assyrians were in power. And, and if you're not aware of it, my brother, let me tell you something. The Assyrian deportation policy was to deport high priests. You know why? Because they didn't want the people, the natives of the lands that they conquered, to use their God to conquer them. So they got rid of the high priest. So when did you guys get the chance to write a Torah if there was a high priest missing? Where were your high priests at? They were shipped all over. They yeah. got rid of them and brought in their own people. So how did your Torah get written? Hmm, interesting, huh? And later on, if I get to talk, I'm going to explain to you guys why Elephantine, the people in Elephantine, where they really came from, and why they know about Passover. And we need to understand why Passover predates when your exodus happened. These are the things we need to figure out why the Amorites and all these people live in this region and how their traditions carried on for years upon years. We could argue about the book all day, 
That's my specialty. We could get it in. But let's be real. You or nobody, in my opinion, have the right to tell any person who claims a religion that they don't have the right to claim it. Because it's not yours from the, from the get-go. It's not yours. Kalam, go ahead, man. Jeez. Kalam. This, this is getting is crazy. That, One second. Is that, is, that, is that a response? I can respond to that? Or you want me to wait? You have to wait. You have to wait. In, we've got, we've got oh, too many man. people on here. We've got too oh, many people man. on here. Oh, you know, so it's no, it's no response or nothing no, like that. No response, no response for now. You know what? I'm gonna have to do a big kom yasharal right about now, cause I've got kom yasharala. There you go. I've got Moray Yoel in the building, and um, you know what? He's been waiting for a long time. He's like a caged lion, ready to come out of his den and really explode. So, um, you know what, Moray? Please, um, you know what? Let's talk to us, and before you do actually talk to us, I want to remind everybody why we're here today. You know what? There is actually a debate that's going to be uh, taking place between uh, Brother Polite and Rabbi Harry Rosenberg. And um, within that, there is a, a few topics that's been raised. The topics such as, does the Hebrew God um, exist? Does the Hebrew God exist? Does he love our people? Is there doctrine, the doctrine of death and destruction of the black people? Is the black man actually cursed according to the Torah? And are the children of Israel the chosen people? Okay, so I want to hear your thoughts on this matter. Um, but Moray, please go in. I know you've got something to say, so um, please do. Okay, I'd like to first of all give all honor and praise to the Holy One of Israel. And uh, I'd like to say peace and uh, shalom, shalom to the family. And uh, shalom. and uh, to it all for allowing us to come on the, uh, the talk show, we definitely uh, uh, love to be able to reach out to the family, share information and things of that nature. Uh, real quick, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, I hear a lot of shots of information being, like, kind of thrown out. And uh, I don't know if, you know, the brother is really giving an ear to it. My brother, the mighty Hebrew, had asked. And if we want to discuss about ideology, let's table that for a discussion other than right now when we should be just giving our opinion on Polite and Rabbi Rosenberg's. So I ain't going to shoot no shots at nobody because then we, 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 we just repeating the same insanity. And that's not what we should be doing right now as men. What we should be doing as men is saying, hey, we don't agree on this point. You don't agree on this point. Let's table it for discussion. And let's do what men do is talk about it on a platform that has that topic. But let me just give my opinion real quick on uh, Polite and Rabbi Rosenberg. Uh, first of all, I think that, you know, is a, 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 you know, see, I do like the psychological realm of things, and I know that many of our people look for a verification of things. You know, so the brother mentioned earlier about uh, science and medicine. Well, before you had science, you had herbs. You had, you had things growing from the ground. You know, and, and these are things that are observable. These are things that we utilize to heal ourselves, right? But then you can have, you know, you can sell that, and people really won't buy it if it's coming from you. Um, but if you get a person of a different uh, 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 nationality to come forth with that same ide ideology or ideal, people will buy into it. The point that I'm trying to mention without really going into it is that we as a people, we look for verification from others we shouldn't be looking from it for. You see, we should be setting a standard in the bar ourselves. You know, so uh, polite, you know, I definitely give the brother respect for what he's doing in the community. And I enjoy hearing him earlier because he sounded level-headed. You know, he talked about how instead of coming on and uh, going back and forth about fighting and debating, let me, let me talk to you about how you can do what I'm doing. You know, let, let me sit and talk to you how we could probably work together. And so that's what we have to do as a people, learn to work together d d d despite our differences. That is a sickness, no matter how knowledgeable you think you are, to keep debating. Wake up. You know, we got, you got reason is, is more important than debate. Reasoning. We, we, we skip past reasoning and we just want to shoot shots at each other. You know, but as men, let's get back to being uh, rational and not emotional. You know, and so uh, Rabbi Rosenberg's my thought on him is basically going back to that verification that 
it's, it's, if you go and you read this book, it's called uh, Israel and the Appomattox, and it goes back and tells you about uh, how uh, during the 1800s you had Israelites in Prince George County, Virginia. You know, and this book was written by uh, 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 Eli Patrick or Patrick Eli, and this was a, a European who wrote about the existence of black Hebrews in Virginia, you know, who were descendants of slaves. Well, when he wrote that, they took that book off the shelves because it was written by a European justifying the, the existence of uh, 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 us who are uh, claiming our identity as Israelites. But it wasn't black people talking about it. It wasn't black people saying, you know, hey, this is who we are. You had somebody from a different nationality saying, hey, I agree with them. This is who they are. And so I think it's a beautiful thing to have uh, Rabbi Rosenberg coming forth, you know, uh, basically with some claims that basically saying that us, our, our people, we are Hebrew Israelites. Now, do I agree with everything he's bringing forth? No. But we got to stop always trying to knock people down and sometimes look at some good and what's being brought forth. We so busy, used to fighting each other and being in opposition, we never really get to embrace some good in people and what they may be sharing that may be uh, uh, beneficial for us. We have that psychological sickness that we really got to get rid of. You know, so those are my words, and I'm glad to be on the talk show. Peace to you, Brother Colum, and to our Brother Basim, to the Mighty Hebrew, to, uh, to, the, uh, Amr, uh, uh, to our Brother Garfield, to Timo Cyrus, to all my brothers on the phone. Uh, 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 you know, may the Most High continue to bless us all, and may we all move the nation forward. Progression, brothers, progression. Peace, shalom, shalom, my moray, yo, Alan. You know what? Uh, that's so beautiful. He had some really encouraging and positive words for us. Um, Real quickly, real quickly, I know most of you may be new to the show, just tuning in right now. If you're new to the show, please just hit the subscribe button uh, down below. Uh, we have, you know, a plethora of shows, past shows that's taken place with the Amin Ra squad, with uh, Dr. Ali Mohammed, uh, what's his name now, Irritated Genie, uh, Red Pill, so many uh, names have actually passed through the studio. So uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already hit the subscribe button because uh, we've got plenty of shows uh, coming up. Actually, we've got a show coming up next week, uh, when, next week Wednesday, um, to do with IFA, IFA and the Orishas. So if you're into West Africa, uh, West African um, religious or spiritual systems, uh, this will be right up your alley. You know what? We've actually got uh, Panahisi as well and Issa Abdul Haq in the building. So you know what? Let me actually get somebody on right now. Who wants to come on first? First voice will be on. Yes, brother. Before I forget. All right, Isa. Salam alaikum. <laughs> Welcome, salam, Ooh, family. Welcome, hold on, salam. hold on, hold on. One second, one second. Before you go in, before you go in. Okay, hold on. I've got my brother Harry, um, trying to get in. So you know what? Our Rabbi Harry Rosenberg is trying to I'll, get in right I'll, now. I'll drop out, good brother. Okay, excellent. All right. Thank you very much, Basim. You know what? Okay, carry on, carry on, um, Isa. Yeah, basically, um, one of the things that I find quite common amongst those people who claim to represent science, and I'm specifically um, addressing Garfield's approach, and maybe the other brother, not Ngozi, they always like to straw man what people are saying. The Hebrew yeah, brother would clearly say quite common amongst those people who claim to represent science. And I'm specifically okay, hear my voice back, bro. Hold, hold on, Isa, one second. Um, Re repeat, repeat yourself, Isa. I didn't hear you. Could you hold repeat on. that, Isa? One second. Before anybody repeats himself, I believe our um, Rabbi uh, Rosenberg has just joined us. Let me just confirm that. One second. Global. Global. There was somebody on the name Global. Who is that? Um, global. There is somebody on the name Global. Is that um, Rabbi Rosenberg? Yeah. Global. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's him. Yes. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so we're actually discussing um, right now um, your upcoming debate with Light. Uh, Rosenberg. Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, I can you turn you... down your YouTube, brother? Yes, yes, it is. Matter of fact, turn your YouTube off, please. We're actually discussing. Turn um, it down, bro. 
Okay, and please, everybody else, can you mute your mics? Everybody else, please, mute your mics. Yes. So, yes, Rabbi. So, we're actually discussing um, your appearance on Sarnet TV yesterday, and I think he was on Black Magic as well. Um, so, you're actually going to be in this upcoming debate. Could you give us some information about the debate that's going to be taking place? Um, yeah, you know what? I, I wasn't looking for this. Sorry? I believe someone's playing something. I'm hearing double... Uh... Um, do you have um, the YouTube playing in the background at all? We have, we have to mute a few mics. Can I? Okay, I'm here. I hear you now. Some, someone oh. muted it. It's good. Yeah, so what were you saying? Perfect. Uh, could you give us... Um, you know what? You've actually been on Sonata TV where we've seen you, and you've got an upcoming uh, debate with Polite. Um, could you give us your thoughts on that, and are you looking forward to it, and uh, what information would you like to bring out? Okay, I do appreciate it. Um, basically, I wasn't looking to get into this debate. It kind of found me, but once I'm here, I believe both my community and your community and all the humans of the world are up against a tremendous evil, and the only way to, to advance to the next level of humanity is to work together as a team. And I'm not really here to debate polite, because it seems he's been beaten in the past many times. But I'm here because the people are here to listen and watch. And if I can offer my my opinions on how to move forward and it could take, get taken seriously, I'd love that. Definitely. We definitely want to hear what you have to say. It seemed yesterday, um, you know, the conversation that you did have with the brother Polite, it did seem that it was leading questions and wasn't allowing you the space to actually... Um, get the information that you want to get out to the public, and you know, I for one is very, I'm very intrigued to what you have to say. What solutions? What plans have you got in place to actually offer up um, to uh, the global communities, not just sim sim simply and singly the American community, the only Afro American community, but the global community? Could you give us some more information about you know what you really want to get out to the public? I do appreciate that. I, I wasn't so disappointed that they didn't really let me get my vision out there because i got to save some meat for the debate. Uh, but at the same time, I've been working on something for many years already where you have this phenomenon of this, the global house of Israel where people who identify with being an Israelite is, is not a, uh, something that's just in America. It's something that's in across the Silk Road from Afghanistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kashmir, uh, all the way to Japan, China, India, it's in Africa. So I'm, I'm saying to myself, if we got all these hundreds of millions of people around the world talking about the House of David, we do have you know a little bit different ideologies, but we should still be united on a core belief system. And you know we could talk about religion after world peace happens. We could have our debates, but we got to put our foot down right now and see the world's heading in a very bad place. We have to do something as a team. So what I've done... Is it's not official yet, but uh, it's been built already, and it's not a secret. You could read about it if you know Google some of my names. We've built a social network, basically a new platform where it's a map of the world where villages around the world could log themselves in, kind of like the Israelite social network, and it's going to be designed to empower the community through technology and sustainability and uh, local education. So uh, I've partnered with different universities where we can now bring college education to the community where we don't have to leave and go to these universities and it's going to start from our youth so if we can have everywhere in McDonald's there's going to be a greenhouse producing our own electricity and have our own medicine and not have a government intervening with all that then we could we could start to develop into a healthy nation and this is going to be global because a lot of the borders we have around the world today which makes up the people who claim to be from the House of Israel were man-made borders by European state nations a lot of those borders are dissolving now so what's going to be the borders of the future who's going to protect us so we all know, you know, there's conspiracies about there's this force that's going to try to unite and create a one-world government and a one-world order. But at the same time, that, that that's what the prophecies were. But it doesn't necessarily have to be an evil leadership. If the people get together, we could do it on our own. And uh, this is just the start. But so far, we've been mapping out villages all across Nigeria because we got the Igbo tribe out there holding down the Israel uh, identity. We're in, you know, Kenya. Congo, Cameroon, Ghana, we're all across Africa now. Our villages are logging themselves in on our social network. We're in Afghanistan and across the Silk Road. So right now, when Brother Polite's talking to me, he's not talking to me. He's talking to the Global House of Israel, and we're on the verge of a crazy redemption. So we just got to stay strong and stick together. And when all's said and done, when we beat this and there's no more wars, we could all have a cup of tea and talk about, is there a New Testament? Is there an Old Testament? Did the Messiah come? Did he not come? These are luxury debates and conversations that we don't have the time for right now. 
Ooh, powerful. You know what? I think I think you actually hit the nail on the head. I think a lot of the community is, you know what, in accordance with exactly what you're saying. Um, you know what? We can have all these frivolous debates once we get the basics in order first. And you know what? We're in the new age. We're in this new age of information and technology, and it's such a glorious thing that you know what? So many different communities all across Africa that you named Cameroon, Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, all across to the Silk Roads, all the way to Israel, um, Iraq, and so forth can unite with each other, um, not only based upon uh, their ideology or the Jewish ideology or ethnicity or whatever the case may be, but um, we, can, we can come together via this technology and we can share information and actually communicate with each other to actually advance our civilization and advance humanity um, as a whole. So that is beautiful. Um, you know what, we're going to come back to you, my brother, because I wanna, we want to speak with you some more. I know the panel members definitely do have questions for you. Um, but before we go into that, I'm going to have uh, my brother Issa um, actually speak and then we're going to go to Panahisi and then we're going to go into Team Osiris and Team Osiris will, I know Team Osiris definitely have some questions for you. Um, so Isa, you were speaking before, so yes, please um, speak now. Okay. I'm oh, oh, yeah, oh, well, one I second, saying... one second, one second. And we're going to get um, Brother Israel Doctrine. Israel Doctrine, you know, it needs to have his voice heard. But sorry, we've got so many people before you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, basically, I guess the main point I wanted to put across was we need to stop um, people from strawmanning what brothers are saying. Our Hebrew brother made it very clear that he's not objecting to science by saying it's white people's science. He was making a point that when it comes to something specific, when their agenda, is, when they need to change something for their agenda, then they're willing to lie and deceive. That's what he made very clear. So why somebody would pretend that he's saying that science is white or it's the white man's science, that's clearly not what the brother was saying. We know in history that there are people that have come along with so-called fossils claiming this is their evidence for evolution, etc., to be a fraudless link. So why would we think that they wouldn't change certain aspects? That doesn't mean the whole thing is wrong. That doesn't mean the whole of DNA and what they say about it is wrong. So we need to stop this straw man garbage where they're pretending that someone's saying something that they're not. So the next point I wanted to make was when um, the brother was saying about the Igbo people and their, you know, being Hebrews or whatever it was, is it not the case that the Igbo people could be uh, related to the other Hebrews that went out? So, for instance, when Abraham left, his people, whoever his descendants were, would be connected to whoever Abraham came from. So therefore, you would find a load of people with the same DNA older than Abraham going back. So this whole idea, well, the Igbo people have this DNA and, and therefore you cut them off from the other Hebrews, it's ridiculous. Um, the definite next thing I wanted to put in was the brother that just spoke, the uh, rabbi, I would really like for him to explain what his position with this lovely vision of a lovely future we could have. What's his opinion on the fact that the global position that we're in now is based upon the opinion, the false opinion, that the dark you are, the more inferior you are, especially with the fact that he is of the other people? Okay, thank you, Isa. We're going to hold that. We're going to hold that question just for a little bit longer um, because we want to have everybody to have their say before anything else because uh, we're literally running into the last half an hour of the show we've been on for over an hour and a half already um, so hold that question sorry, we're going to go I, back we're going to go I, into can I yeah. make one, one simple sorry don't take 30 seconds uh, the, to the mighty Hebrew um, you were correct in relation to the situation of the conspiracy against the Hebrews is similar to the conspiracy of ancient Kemet and them trying to or you know uh, white and eyes ancient Egypt so I suggest the Hebrew community has to do exactly what the Afrocentric community did when we have Sheikh Anta Diop writing his book, African Origin of Civilization. I suggest you brothers get together and write something similar, which does exactly the same that that book did, and dealt the death blow to those people that were lying on our people. And so long. We have, yeah, we have books out already um, with that, which you're saying, good brother. 
you know, by Ben Ami and others, Dr. Kosriel and the brothers over in Demona, Israel. I would love to touch on that later on. Definitely. Thank you, my Hebrew. Okay, brother. Okay. Um, please, everybody, mute, mute your mics, mute your mics. Okay, so we've got Panahisi. I'm going to go to Panahisi, then we're going to go to Israel Doctrine. So Panahisi, um, this is Panahisi from uh, the Hebrew War Machine with uh, Nasi Yashavel and all the rest of them. So you know what? Um, you know what? Peace to my brother, man. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Jambo. Mm. Lafayette. And I feel um, well, my research, um, I started the African uh, Independent Research uh, Foundation, and I started the African uh, Hebraic uh, Cultural Institute, um, and my research is predicated on an African reorientation of the Torah, the rituals, and the, um, and the myths um, in the creation stories. Uh, and so forth. So this is my this is my purpose. And I do comparative linguistic studies and comparative uh, culture studies. Um, that's enough about me and what I do. But um, as far as the debate goes, um, I'm not on either side because I don't feel like uh, Rabbi Rosenberg can give an accurate um, understanding of the Hebrew Israelites from a cultural standpoint. Um, Brother Polite, he can't do it either because he's anti-Israelite, anti-Bible, but he's anti-unity with black people. So by default, I'm going to side with Brother Polite. That's all I got to say. All right, all right. Wait, all wait, right. wait, wait. One more thing. Go ahead. One, one more thing. Uh, Brother Garfield brought up about the Igbo being indigenous to Igbo land, right? And they have no record or understanding of them coming from anywhere else. But when you look at the history of the Igbo and you look at the modern conflict in Igbo land with the Biafran, they're calling for their own state. And these Biafrans are saying that they're Israelites. Also, too, there's a debate in Nigeria right now amongst the Igbos about where they come from. They're not leaning either way. Some say they came from the sky. That, that Erie came from the sky and landed in Aguilary. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And others are saying that they migrated and they came to uh, uh, Nigeria from the Assyrian captivity and Babylonian captivity and other captivities of the Israelites. Now, captivity is a misnomer because I agree with Garfield by saying they weren't captive. That's all I have to say. All right, thank you. You know what? Um, before we go to Israel Doctrine, I've got this brother from, uh, you know, Ibo land. You know, I, I believe he is a Jewish or a, a Hebrew um, from Nigeria. You know what? This brother has reached out to me several times. He's told me to come down to his um, synagogue and, you know, record and, and, and see what's really going on and what is the Nigerian Hebrews or the Ibo Hebrews about. So I've got him on the phone right now. Um, so I'm going to, my brother, if you're here, please um, speak up because I know you had a few things to say. Um, sure. um, I, um, I say shalom to Rabbi um, Rosenberg. Um, very quickly, man, I'm um, to um, know him as a person. Even though I'm from the UK, uh, but I know him as a rabbi. And also to the brothers in America, I say shalom to everyone and peace to you all. Uh, those who are listening to our voice, our voices very evening. Um, my name is Yaga Zainani. Um, I'm evil Jewish man. And when the brother was speaking about evil, and I just wanted to ask him a bit of a question because I'm evil. Do you understand? Um, I quite know a lot about our people. My family in total is just five generation history in the area you call Nigeria. When I say five generations, from the beginning to the end of it, it's five generations. That's all you can go about. You can't go more than that. And the rest of the thing, you only need to go somewhere else to go look for that. And that's somewhere else you've got to go. It's easier. Okay? Now, the question I've got for the brother that I was speaking about on Sukha, I'll let him literally know at the moment, um, we are currently battling a case with Nigeria. The case of survival. They're saying we're immigrants. 
and we had no right to the land. Currently, as we speak, the, to the territories are being divided and we are being kicked off and call it Niger Delta, South South. But I don't know, we view mobile phone, if you, if you go mobile phone, I believe every one of us is quite civilized enough to understand the compass, right? Geographically speaking, have you heard of anywhere called, any location at all called South South? Does that exist? Mm -hmm. No, South South. You can't go South South. You go South East, North East, but there is no South South. But these are the political conditions that we are created to be on at the moment. So, in other words, the reason I'm bringing this up is to let him understand that Igbo history is very complicated. The reason the Igbo people that you are hearing, a uh, few of the people are not coming up widely to clearly declare and tell people their real identity. If we lose the present position, the occasion where we are as Igbo nation, where are we going to be? The Nigerian amalgamation document clearly states they are the children of Israel. Nigerian amalgamation paper, official amalgamation paper, British arrival to Nigeria, we have spoken to the Hausa community, says across the river are children of Israel. Why were we called children of Israel? Why was people referred to as Zionists? Proud to even the state of Israel embarking on Zionism. How do you just want to ask the brother a word speaking about evil because he intends to say that he knows a lot about evil. And then also I'll say a few things on evil and I'll translate it for the listeners to understand like but the word um, evil when it's like a question. There's a question that says um, a remark saying evil is in agreement, evil agrees. And the response is yeah. And this is, this, it's no, it didn't say, oh, like a front knife, or like a British urban, yeah, which is much more modern for so even English people. English people would say yes. That's a conventional English. He would say yeah. And this has been as yeah, a response. And that is the calling of a higher authority. No matter what the noise, no matter how the agreement, no matter what the, you know, the vibration is going on. And as soon as that call, the higher being of authority is called. And everyone stays silent for the higher being of authority to take place. And the response is, yeah. So could you tell me, how did that come in place? And I don't understand people are trying to study kinetic science and try to fortify the history of evil at the moment who the Nigerian state have accused of being immigrant to the land. Mm. So if the evil politically are pushed out with a little space, since they weren't able to review and say, um, come up with the real identity and say, okay, we are children of Israel. What do we do? And they say, 45 million people, where would you put 45 million people? Israel is very small. The current state of Israel. Where would you put that? And thank you to um, everyone who's kind of been listening, um, who's listening and to you, Carla, and I just want to say, great, thank you for giving us the opportunity to kind of share this view this very evening. But this is my question to him, so I would love to hear from his point of view, because everyone, all I hear is opposing, opposing the rabbi who has come up with a great concept and idea rather than focusing on problem. Can we find solution? We intend to see problem, problem, and no solution to us as a people, humanity, to call the lamb, making the world a better place. You know what? Dalo, my brother, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm going to get this uh, answered later on in the show. Maybe off air it might be get um, answered because we are very short for time. And I have to say, Dalo, again to you, thank you very much um, for explicating that. And you know what, my brother? Just for the audience to hear this. Ibo Kwenu. Yeah. Ibo Kwenu. Yeah. Ah. All right. Kwezu. So you know what? Let me let me um leave out right now, and we're gonna get you back on the phone later on to go in again, okay? But, but we're gonna just go back into the conversation. Thank you, my brother, for calling in. All right. You know what? Um, 
we have to have the voices being heard on the show. You know, we've got people calling in from all across the world with all different types of ideological and political views, and we would love them all to be heard on the show. But we are actually running short of time. We're, we're pushing the two-hour mark as it speaks or as it stands. But you know what? Israel Doctrine, um, Israel Doctrine, I know you want to go in. You've been waiting for a long time. You know what? The bald-headed, bearded guy needs to go. Krillin, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Peace, everyone on the panel. How y'all doing tonight? Well, I'm going to try to stay on topic. Polite and hairy. You know, um, I deal with the New Testament, so I, I don't call nobody rabbi. Um, seeing that Jesus says so. It's nothing personal, so don't take it personal, brother. Um, but... The Hebrew Israelites and their opinion on this debate from the couple things I heard kind of disturbed me because no way in the world will I side with a polite, a pantheist, an atheist, or whatever, a mixed master, you know. Um, from the perspective of a Jesus Christ, once again, dealing with the English terminology, he said, those that do the will of my father are my brother, right? So if Torah is the will of the father, or the God of the Bible, the Most High, then how can one be against one that does what the Torah pronounces for one to do? Anyone that's against that, and they say they stand for Torah, might as well go blow their head off tonight and get rid of, you know, the ignorance and the craziness that has uh, come up on them, or just repent and start living right. But everybody know that uh, you know I'm legendary for bringing the conversation of all of humanity, as long as they do Torah and do righteous by the law, statutes, and commandments of the God of Israel, can receive the salvation of their soul, even their interest into you know eternal life outside of the lake of fire. I don't know how many people believe in those. Uh, terms of those uh, ideas. So when I heard the brother, Harry, and I'm calling him a brother because he claimed to do the will of my father until he do different than that, then I can't call him nothing else. Just like I call any Hebrew Israelite, which is my disclaimer always that I'm not a Hebrew Israelite. I don't use that terminology because it's like combining two words. I either be a Hebrew or I be an Israelite or a Jew. You know, um, you know, I call them brothers too. Sometimes I don't get the love that I deserve from the brothers, but you know, I call them brothers too because they call themselves doing the will of my father. So, outside of that, I believe polite trying to make his last payday and dash. He's trying to do a Harlem night thing. You know, if you've seen the movie, they got their big pay and they was out of town. That's how I look at it, right? I see this as a, that that type of opportunity. I see him trying to throw his Pan-Africanism, his red, black, and green, and different stuff, and, you know, get all the so-called blacks together to hate on the white man. You know what I'm saying? That's as simple as it get, you know. The Bible don't deal with racism. It deal with nationality and deal with nations. And we know if you deal with it in common times that you can have dual citizenship or you can go to another nation and become a part of that nation and stuff. So when dealing with the nation of Israel, the Bible or the Torah say if one willing to sojourn and keep those laws, statutes, and commandments, that they can enter in. So when the brother spoke about the mixed multitude, I had to agree because I've been pushing that forever. So the conscious community cannot be hypocrites. If you've been begging the Israelites to take down a 12 tribe chart and say, hey, you Africans, y'all are my brother, then you cannot diss the white man. For the same thing that you've been asking Hebrew Israelites to do, and he said, "Well, I ain't got no twelve tribe chart. Even though I got this skin tone, don't mean that I won't embrace you as a brother. So let's not be hypocrites, blacks, or whatever nationality you want to claim. Let's not be hypocrites, and let's look at this thing properly. And one thing Mr. Rosenberg can do, just like Eminem did for rap, he could take the platform and push it up." But at the same time, as I said on my commentary the other night, I think like when he left, Polite went into this 
diatribe and all this craziness and stuff after he left. If anyone that's not of hood persuasion was listening to that, they would have said, man, is this the Nasut of Kemet? Is this uh, the represent, represent the reputation that the country's community going to have because you're making this the poster boy? So I think we really need to look at the politics outside of the country's community because this could be, and I believe it is because this is the UK, this is on a global scale. That means that's taking the tour in the Tanakh on a global scale. And after that, you know, we can argue and debate, you know, if the Hebrews was originally black and white and things of that nature. But let's get past this point, and then if the brother is willing, he might even debate a black Hebrew or a black Israelite or a black Jew and deal with those type of things. It ain't like he's not extending his hand to the community. But the thing is, he already embraced the blacks as being one of his brothers, even part of the Lost Tribe, and he may be a convert or whatever. And y'all can talk to him about it. He may be a convert or whatever, but if he's willing to sojourn, we are not to vex him. That is law. And with that, I'm done. Thank you Thank very you much, much, Israel Dutchman. I love that. You know what? Um, <clears throat> real quickly, real quickly, real quickly. We're going to have some questions um, coming through from Team Osiris. I know Team Osiris wants to ask uh, the Rabbi Harry Rosenberg some questions, so we're definitely going to go into that. Also, um, if you actually want to support the show and um, you know, donate some funds for us to keep on going, keep on pushing the works that we are doing. Um, just literally in the description box down below, there is a button there that says support us, and it takes you to our Patreon page. Um, in our Patreon page, you can literally donate how much money you want to donate. If you donate as, at least as $15, um, you literally get a free Speaker's Corner DVD. So I don't know if you've been tuning in to see all the debates that we've been doing. We've had the Jew versus you know what the Jew versus Muslim debate was an excellent precursor to this show and to the debate that's going to be taking place. Um, you know what we got the Sikhi versus um, the Muslims yet again. You know what we got the Black atheists um, going in as well. So you know what we got so many debates uh, taking place on the channel. So if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button, go down into the playlist, check out the playlist, and you'll see there's something called Speaker's Corner, where, where it happens literally once a week in the UK, in London, in Hyde Park, everybody from around the UK, literally from around the world, comes to this singular point and congregate to actually have debates constantly throughout the day. Um, I know Issa can actually testify to this. I'm pretty sure we've been there, you know what, since the sun sets to like 2 o'clock in the morning and we're just going in and we're kicking knowledge all day long. So if you want to join us every Sunday, we are there. Uh, weather permitting. As long as the weather's fine, you'll see me there with the camera bringing you some excellent um, debate and information. Um, so, Team Osiris, I know you want to go in. Um, so, if you've got some questions to ask the brother, please shoot them out now. Um, on my behalf, this is Brother Ngozi. I, I feel that um, he made um, the rabbi uh, um, Rosenberg made it clear that, uh, that, that what he's putting together is for people that practice Judaism. He said nothing about helping non-Jewish people. Ibu people that practice Judaism, uh, the people in Afghanistan or Iran that practice Judaism, and him being of um, Eastern European or European descent that practice Judaism. It's for Jews or people that practice the Jewish faith. Um, I don't feel that um, it's nothing to really uh, ask on that. I, I'm glad that he's putting together an organization for the people that believe in his faith or putting something together for them, but he made it clear it's for people that practice Judaism. Um, your Ibu convert brother that came in, you know, he he's up. He knows it. That's pretty I, I much. I think I'm it. being misquoted over here for a second. If I could just chime in. Go ahead, bro. Oh, I never mentioned anything about Judaism. I usually didn't use, wouldn't use that word. I'll just give one reference when I'm when I'm dealing with the people of Afghanistan, the Pashtun who claim to be from the ten missing tribes. They're actually practicing Muslims. They're, they're learning uh, the Quran, that Islam is their religion, yet they still claim to be part of my family. So I'm not actually looking at religion. I'm looking at people who identify with an ancient family, which does span many st states and nations. And then oh. one, of the one of the beliefs of the Torah, as far as the Jewish tradition goes, is the reason for the lost tribes of Israel was to come back one day as a nation and bring everyone else back with them. So the concept that we got people in every country and continent around the world is just 
just a, yeah. is, a, is a gateway to create a global family that everyone else could jump in on with them. So this is not okay. a religion thing at all. Well, okay, you correct me on that, but let me just say this right quick. So since it's not the religion, you say it's a family thing, a family lineage, and you said these this group of people practice Islam and it's a family lineage. So that's even worse. It's about a paternal, it's about DNA, it's about your family lineage. Do you have proof that these Ibu people are part of that lineage outside well, of their conversion? What, what I'm trying to say, it's not DNA. Let me just say this, bro. You just said something about you, they, they practice Islam, but they're part of the, the, the royal family or ancient family or whatever. My question to you is, is there any proof genetically between you and those other groups of people and these Ibu people that you guys connect genetically? Or is there proof that these Ibu people, I mean, I'm just asking you because you just said something about family. Is there proof that these Ibu people of Nigeria genetically matches up with you genetically or affinitely? Is it, is it, do you guys, like, is there proof, like you're talking about the families, the, the different families that you guys are helping, is there proof that this Ibu, this Ibu people of Nigeria, a Niger Kadofian speaking people, are they really part of you genetically? Do you have proof of that? That's my question to you, sir. That's all There's I want. No problem. There's one thing for sure is we're not able to use DNA at all to say who is and who isn't an Israelite because we don't have the ancient DNA mapped out of the ancient people of Israel. Um, you know, all it takes is one Israel, one Israelite to travel to another nation and start a new family and do something unique. So, and, and even furthermore, the Torah is very clear how someone could graft themselves in on the people of Israel. So there's so many mysteries of how someone could have come to this identity. But the fact that someone does have this identity is beautiful, and we shouldn't look at what's wrong with it. We should look at what's right with it and what we could do about it. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. You know what? Hey, um, we, we, we've technically reached the end of the show, okay? Technically, oh, no, 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 no. One, one second. We've technically reached the end of the show, but I know that you want this show to continue. So if you want the show to continue, um, give me a sign in the message section um, or the comment section on the right-hand side. Just type in one if you want us to continue. Um, but we've literally reached the end of the show. So just type in a one if you want us to continue. If not, um, we're going to wrap up the show. Um, but before we do wrap up the show, um, we can actually go on a little bit further off air. Okay, we can carry on this off air. And if you would like to get the link to hear this conversation taking place off air, uh, simply join us on our face Facebook page. Talk with the Titans or the Facebook group Talk with the Titans, and we literally have all the Titans in there that uh, communicates with everybody. You can ask them questions; they're easily accessible. We have loads of dialogues, loads of debates going on in the Facebook group Talk with the Titans. So join us there. Also, um, after this finishes or whilst this is going on, please just hit the share button and let everybody know um, you know we've been having this great dialogue so far. Um, so, who else wants to have something to say? I got something to say. I got something to say. All right. I was about to just, continue just, to keep virus, but go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Yes. This is the right. mighty Hebrew. Shalom Baha Shem Yahweh HaKodesh Yashallah. First and foremost, again, giving all praise and honor to Yahweh, the supreme, sovereign, powerful one in the multiverse. You know, the creator is magnificent. You know, um, everything that is being stated, um, first I want to give um, props to Brother Isa because... What you said tonight is exactly what I meant. Um, dealing with science, you no, know, I, I never discredit science if it's absolute and if it's you know if it can be sustained through natural phenomena. But um, there's also another set of science that is actually in opposition to proper position to actually deal with one's agenda, and it's something great that the rabbi actually said. Speaking about Yisrael being scattered amongst the four corners of the earth, I just want to let the people know um, I'm connected with what is known as the Mighty Hebrew slash Yahshua slash United Nation of Yisrael. And what we're doing is we then consolidated over 329 Hebrew Israelite camps globally from the United States, from China, Japan, all over. And um, what needs to be said because a lot of times when we have these discussions and debates, we never speak about solutions. I was one of the very first Hebrews to come on side negativity with an absolute platform 
while people was debating about dead pharaohs and different things that got Nietzsche, I was bringing forth an absolute platform that was actually working for our people. And I used the kingdom of Yah and Demona Israel as a catalyst or as a blueprint to show that if we would follow the law, statutes, and commandments of the true and living power of the multiverse, we can have vibrant communities because we have communities all over Africa, you know, that are actually vibrant. And if you actually go, because a lot of people, they talk about the Hebrew Israelites, but they never actually been to Israel, especially in Demona, to actually, actually take a look of a living people actually upholding the living culture. So when people say that our stories are based on mythology, let's just look at the results of what we call so-called mythology. Even that terminology, mythology, is actually being taken out of context because mythology doesn't actually mean something that is actually fake, but it's actually legends of people that pass the history down from generation to generation. Um, there is evidence that we were in the Assyrian captivity. There is evidence that we was actually in Kemet 1446 BCE during the 12th dynasty or at the end of the 12th dynasty. There is much information, but that's not the point in taking. Let's deal with what we can prove. When Rabbi Nu Adonu Ben Ami Ben Israel Hamoshiach left in 1967 and went to the land of Israel and built their own community, we have our own system that you can actually see today that's vibrant. When you talk about what's real and what's not, that right there, what we see in Demona, Israel, that's real. That's tangible. That is something that we can see. The same thing that the rabbi is talking about right now, Ben Ami, may he rest in completeness with the Hebrew Israelite community for over 50 years. Over, a lot of people are afraid to talk about the, Hebrew, the African Hebrew Israelites in Jerusalem because what they do is they show you results. We have our own irrigation system. We have our own schools. We have our own clothing. We have our own factories. We are actually, you know, bringing forth things that we are still speaking about over here in the United States wanting. Now, there's debates of we shouldn't have went to Israel. We should have went to Israel. The reality is the reality is this. Israel is all over the four corners of the earth. And after all the philosophical masturbation, Israel is just going to still keep elevating. You can, as a matter of fact, if you go on the Internet, they say right now, even though they call it a religion, but it's a culture because the Torah is our constitution. They say the Hebrew Israelite religion, which is really a culture and a heritage, is the fastest growing heritage and culture among so-called African Americans and Negroes in the diaspora. We cannot take this lightly. We cannot just sit back and say, oh, that's just some religious fanatics. But let's talk about the things that has been developed by us upholding the Israelite culture. Everybody amongst the conscious community, this is no shout out, no shots to anybody, but we have to look at what actually works what is practical for our people to come from out of this mental side and this physical mental death that we are in. Go to the money yourself. Don't talk about, you know, what they're doing, this, that, the third, because that's the community I'm a part of. I'm a part of the kingdom of Yah that's stationed in Demona, Israel. So you're not talking to just any Hebrew Israelite. So what I'm saying to the family is this. We need results. We need real results. Our communities is in a deplorable state. And I'm saying, what is more greater than what has been established with the Hebrew Israelite community? And if the rabbi is saying what he's saying about globalizing Israel as a sovereign nation, I'm with that 100% globalizing the ancient Hebrew Israelite nation that modern descendants descend today. And one more thing, I'm going to let it go. And the rabbi is correct. I said this earlier about trying to trace DNA back to the H haplo or hyplotype. He just confirmed it. You cannot, that is made up. They made that up. They took Arabs and European Jews and they created a hyplo group as if that was talking about Israel culture. I asked anybody on this panel or anywhere, where is the bones, the ancient bones that they abstract the ancient Israelite DNA? This is what I'm asking. That they abstracted the ancient Hebrew Israelite DNA and abstracted that and identified that as a genetic marker of Israelite lineage. They've never done that. They took modern people 
that they already had a preconceived notion of who's a Jew and who's not a Jew and perpetrated to the world that this is how we identify who's Shemitic or who's not Shemitic. And it's not, and when you start talking about Semitic, there's a play on words because one minute people are talking about language and then another minute they're talking about the people that are descendants of Shem and we know that in the Greek there was no SH sound so when you say the Afro-Asiatic language or the Shemitic languages you're really talking about the children of Shem that's what's really but see they still say that this is mythology but again I already established what mythology really is so to my family Israel we have to unite under one sovereign autonomistic banner the hell with all this debating let's get results done our children are getting murdered on the street and Flint Michigan they drinking dirty water the cops is versus turning into homosexuality more our brothers is getting mighty, mighty Hebrew more mighty Hebrew turning to less than mighty Hebrew did you go to jail for rape because I can't follow no. my rapists no, hold I did not hold go on, to jail. Hold on, oh, I'm no, no. On. We can go there. No, hold I on, didn't. Hold on. No, hold I on, didn't. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If, hold no, on, no, 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 no. Hold on, no, 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 no. We're not going there. We're not going there. No, no, it's cool. No. We can go there. No, 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 if we're you want to go there. there, that could be for another show. So you know what? Um, I'm saying you brought this stuff for reason. So okay. we can okay. actually go there. You want to go there? Hold on, hold on, my Hebrew. Go ahead, go ahead, Kalam. All right. You know what? Um, literally, we're reaching the end of the show. But you know what? I want to get my brother Polite on the show real fast. Like, what's going on with Polite? Why is he not answering? Um, on. One second, Kalam. Could you please uh, do something about him asking a question like that? That was totally, that was totally out of line. He should be no, kicked off. No, no, if he would have watched. No, I mic, just want to say this. Mic's no, Kalam. Everybody keep your mic. I know. Muted. Kalam, I just want to say this one thing, Kalam. Go watch Truth, Lies, and Sovereignty. Y'all already know that my name was clear. I'm saying this is what I mean by the disrespect because thank you, thank they you. can't handle can't they can't there. handle can't the weight, so they had to make that brother. comment. You understand what I'm saying because they can't brother. handle the brother, truth brother that Hebrew. is being told. All right, brother Hebrew. Brother Hebrew. You know what? The next person let's, to speak. Let's not give that any ear. All right, next person to speak. He's out. a chump. If you want to see me, I'm in Philly. We'll be ejected from the conversation. <laughs> so. Right about now, right about now, let me see. I need to give a big shout out to everybody who wants the show to continue. A big shout out to uh, uh, Kessie, Denzel Bird, Beery Biscuit, Ace and Murray, Mo Habit, uh, Wisem, White Randall. Um, please, I'm f sorry I can't get everybody's name out. D Soul Powered, Augustus, uh, Ken Folk, uh, Boxing Wizard, Newbie. Uh, newbie Queen Anton Cosby Mind Over Matter Leviathan Kane Kellen Lewis um, you know what it goes on if I got you know what it goes on and on I do apologize I can't read out every single person's name and I have to give a big shout out as well to everybody who supported and donated uh, to the channel thus far I gotta give a shout out to Alexander who's donated, Ali Dawood L who's don donated, and Basim uh, Khakab who's donated as well. So big shout outs to everybody who is supporting uh, Titans TV and allowing me to continue to give you this great information and link up with everybody across the world. You know, we've got people from Nigeria phoning in, we've got people from Israel calling in, you know, the Arabian countries calling in, all sorts. So we've got everybody around the world calling in. I've got to give thanks to everybody who's donated and helping me to uh, continue the great works that we're doing. Um, Hey course, brother, can we get an apology from that brother before we continue? No, we're please? not going there. And anybody who no, does it's, interrupt, it's, it's, no, it, does interrupt, will be ejected from the group. So please do not interrupt, okay? Because there's so many people that wants to get into the conversation right now. Um, so brother, um, uh, brother Rabbi Harry Rosenberg, um, I want you to give us, you know, the last statements of the show before we do sign out. We are going to continue and have an after show uh, special. Um, hopefully we can get Polite and Zion Lex involved with this as well um, and the rest of the Amon Ross squad I know the Amon Ross squad wants to get involved as well um, so Rabbi, Rabbi Brother Kalam Brother Kalam Brother Kalam no you remember you, you said my question will be answered at the end could you mm. put a pointer to that okay I shall do yeah. I shall do right at the end alright so um, can we get the Rabbi um, to come on and give us some um, closing remarks as well. I appreciate that. I know you guys are tight on time. If, if we're going to have a closing remark, all I could say 
is everything you guys are doing here. I know you're looking for solutions, but just the conversation that you're having is such such a beautiful thing that you guys are striving for truth and trying to throw out truths and like mature gentlemen come to what the truth is. And I think this is the greatest asset that the future of the world has, and it's lying in your hands. So it's an honor to be here with everyone. And it's an honor to have you on the show. And I know I'm going to get uh, slaughtered if I don't get Issa's question answered before we go off air and we have our private uh, dialogue between each other. So Isa, could you just reiterate the question that you did have um, for um, our rabbi right now? Okay, um, he seemed to be saying, you know, this, this wonderful idea of future of peace and love, and I was saying, considering the fact that it's our people who are at the bottom, so the world that we're complaining about, it is built upon the fact that our people, black people, are inferior. So him being a Caucasian, what is his specific um, methodology of addressing that specific point, that specific issue that, that everyone is taught that the darker you are, the more inferior you are? All right, the racial inferiority uh, complex. Okay, excellent question. You know what? Um, we've got close enough to 200 people tuned in. I know they want to have more of the show. Okay, please, um, Rabbi. Can you, can you answer that question? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, I don't think focusing on fighting racism is worth our energy as opposed to focusing on creating a beautiful future. So when, you know, if your communities, we, we bring decentralized systems, means we have our own electricity production, we're doing lo local organic food production, we're making healthy, happy children. So the haters, like I said, the haters are going to hate. We can't, we can't stop beautiful things because there's people with negative opinions. So I'm not going to press pause by people's insanities. I'm just going to keep going forward with what we agree is a good plan. So yes, racism exists. Let's just make beautiful things that it'll phase out over time. Thank you so much. You know what? Um, you've actually been tuned in to talk with the Titans. Um, this is Titans TV, you know, and I'm Callum L. I've been your host. And I know you want more of the show. And hopefully, if you just pay close attention, subscribe to the channel right now, subscribe to the channel right now, and even um, join the Facebook group so you can get the link to come in. I may just set up a second show, a round two, where we can go in a little bit more but we got to close off this show so um, if you haven't already subscribed hit the subscribe button and you will get the notification hit the bell button click notification to be notified of upcoming shows and hopefully I'm gonna try and put on another show uh, to continue right now alright so um, you know what I'm signing out I gotta give my thanks and praise to every single individual that's come on the show uh, to express their views um, to Israel doctrine doctrine to Garfield um, to Ngozi to Panahisi to the Hebrew uh, war machine family to the my Hebrew to Isa um, to Kufu to Moray Yor Yorel you know everybody who's come on the show um, even even to my Nigerian Igbo brother who phoned in as well and we apologize that we couldn't get everybody on the show but hopefully just tune in subscribe and we definitely will get another show up and running um, so peace we're signing out